This demonstration shows how IBM Watson technology is being put to work in healthcare to help oncologists identify personalized, confidence-weighted, evidence-based treatment options to improve quality of care and patient experience. It's meant to be used for informational purposes only and is not necessarily a direct reflection of systems in production today. This demonstration was created with the guidance and expertise of physicians at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, a key IBM solution development partner. Let's meet our main character, Mrs. Yamato. She is a 37-year-old woman from Osaka, Japan, who has never smoked. She goes to her primary care physician with a persistent dry cough and labored breathing. The physician prescribes a chest x-ray which shows a suspicious mass. A subsequent CT scan and biopsy confirms the likelihood of cancer. The doctor refers Mrs. Yamato to an oncologist for treatment and forwards her electronic medical record, or EMR. On the day of her appointment, Mrs. Yamato sits in the waiting room of the oncologist, Dr. Mark Norton. She is understandably nervous about her situation. In the few minutes he has between appointments, Dr. Norton steps into his office to familiarize himself with Mrs. Yamato's case. He logs into the electronic medical record system, and instead of digging through the different sections of the EMR to try to find relevant information for the case, he clicks on the Ask Watson button at the bottom left. Watson evaluates all of the information in the EMR and analyzes it against tens of thousands of documents in its vast corpus of evidence sources, like medical journals, industry association guidelines, specific hospital best practices, and identifies the pertinent case facts. Watson has brought forward information like the results of Mrs. Yamato's recent chest X-ray, CT scan, and biopsy. Dr. Norton can see a more detailed view of each fact in the EMR if he wants to. The evidence button shows the reasons why Watson pulled this information out as relevant to the case. The advisor can also prompt Dr. Norton for additional info that would result in a more complete view of the patient's condition. In this case, it's asking if Mrs. Yamato has had any hypnopthesis which is coughing up blood, or if her hearing is normal. So it's really a two-way dialogue between Dr. Norton and the Watson advisor. Here, he sees tests that he might consider ordering, a molecular pathology panel, and an MRI of the brain to check if the cancer has spread. Dr. Norton wants to see why the first test was suggested, so he presses the evidence button and reviews the reason supporting the suggestion. He can see it in plain language on the left along with the specific references on the right. If he wants to, he can remove any of these evidence sources from consideration by pushing the Remove button, or he can go deeper into specific references by pressing the View button, which shows the specific text down to the paragraph level supporting the test suggestion. Moving over to the Treatment Options tab, Dr. Norton considers a panel of three confidence-scored suggestions. At this point, the treatment option suggestions have low and similar confidence levels due to the limited and incomplete information available. Watson also provides him with insights into clinical trials to consider based on Mrs. Yamato's case. Dr. Norton feels well prepared for his first consultation with Mrs. Yamato and calls her into his exam room. They discuss the case, and Dr. Norton performs a physical exam. Mrs. Yamato tells him that it would be difficult to explain sudden hair loss to her young children and that she would like to avoid that if possible. Dr. Norton dictates this preference along with his other notes, which are added to the EMR. He calls in orders for the tests and makes a follow-up appointment for Mrs. Yamato. Ten days later, the test results are ready, and Mrs. Yamato is once again in the waiting room. Dr. Norton steps into his office to update himself on her case. He sees on the Watson toolbar that there are two new pieces of data available, so he presses on the Case Information tab and sees the results from the tests. The molecular pathology panel has found a mutation. However, he is relieved and encouraged to see that the MRI shows that the cancer has not spread to Mrs. Yamato's brain. With the newly available test information, the Watson advisor has identified possible treatment options with much greater confidence. The first plan. A three-drug combination has a high level of confidence and an acceptable match with Mrs. Yamato's preference to avoid hair loss. Clearly, effective treatment is the first priority, and matching her hair loss preference is just a bonus. For example, treatment number three has a preferred match with her hair loss preference, but with such a low degree of confidence in the treatment itself, it is not considered further. 
Dr. Norton wants to see the reasons behind Watson's top suggestion, so he pushes the evidence button. Again, he sees the reasons on the left, along with the specific references on the right. At this point, he feels well prepared and calls Mrs. Yamato in. They discuss the test results and treatment options, and Dr. Norton asks if there have been any change to her condition in the last 10 days. She tells him that just yesterday she coughed up a small amount of blood. Knowing this will likely alter her treatment plan, Dr. Norton presses on the blue Watson avatar on the bottom and speaks directly into the microphone on his tablet. He pushes the finish speaking button when he is done and checks to make sure that his speech has been correctly converted to text. If it had not been, he could push retry or he could push the keyboard icon if he preferred to type directly. He could also choose to cancel, but the transcription is correct, so he submits the new information and the Watson advisor processes this new information to reconsider Mrs. Yamato's treatment options. The advisor comes back with an alternate set of treatment plans, which remove a specific drug that is not appropriate for someone who is showing symptoms of hypnopthesis. Dr. Norton could choose to ignore this new information if he was just doing a hypothetical scenario, but since this is real information, he applies it to Mrs. Yamato's case. The advisor presents the confidence levels for the revised set of treatment plans. The list of clinical trials has also been narrowed to a single trial for Mrs. Yamato and Dr. Norton to consider. After discussing the options and reasons behind them, they jointly decide to move forward Treatment Plan 1, which has a high level of confidence as well as an acceptable match with Mrs. Yamato's preference to avoid hair loss. Dr. Norton can now request pre-authorization for this treatment from Mrs. Yamato's insurance carrier. He presses the button and, since the treatment plan was completely evidence-based, the insurance provider immediately authorizes the treatment. Dr. Norton now presses the order button and Mrs. Yamato starts her treatment immediately, reassured that she is getting the highest quality care available. Shifting gears from Dr. Norton's role to that of a hospital or health plan administrator, the advisor provides a customizable dashboard showing key performance indicators, like where the advisor is being used, how it is performing, and what information sources are most useful. The administrator can drill down into the data more specifically to get more details such as performance over different time spans, metrics on specific types of cancer, or in this case, a narrower geographic area. This hypothetical demonstration is focused on healthcare, but it's easy to imagine other similar data intensive scenarios across other industries where cognitive systems like IBM Watson can be applied.